Welcome to Dr. Piercy's The Game Number Class for our JSP Guessing Game Example. In this video, we'll review the Guessing Game Example, JSP version, and how the Game Number class fits in. You'll also learn how to add a Java class to a dynamic web application. In the spirit of thinking before programming, let's review the game. First the Game Master will decide on a secret number. The player of games will then try to guess that number in a series of guesses. For each guess, the Game Master will respond with whether or not the guess is correct. If it is incorrect, the Game Master will respond whether the guess is lower or higher. Eventually, the guess will be correct and the Game Master will respond, providing statistics about how the game went. To build this game, for our JSP version, we'll need to make two web components, an index.jsp and a game.jsp. Each of these may call on components in the model. For our model, we'll include one Java class called GameNumber. Some of you may be thinking this is not necessary for our guessing game, and I would have to say, you're correct! The only reason I'm including it is so I can teach you how to add Java classes in a simple way to a dynamic web application. So here we are back in Eclipse. You can click on the arrow next to our project, which we created in an earlier video, to expand the project. For now, we're going to add the game number class. This is a Java resource, so we need to add it under our Java resources. So let's click on the arrow to expand that folder. Within Java resources, we see the source folder. As mentioned when we created the project, this is where we will store any Java classes. Let's click on the arrow to expand and we see that there's nothing within the source folder. It's actually a good idea to do a little bit more organization and to keep your classes in separate packages. So before we create the game number Java class, let's add a package. I'm going to right click on the SRC folder, select New, and then from the list I'm going to pick Package. As usual, a dialog comes up which we need to fill out carefully before moving on. In this case, it's very simple, we just need to add the package name. As my game number class will be considered part of the model for my application, I'm going to call my package Model. Then click on Finish. It will look as if model is showing up just below source, but it actually is within the source folder. Now that we have the model package, we need to go ahead and create with, within the model package our Java class game number. Right click on model, select new as before. This time, select class from the list. Here's our only dialog page that we need to fill out for a new Java class. Note that the source folder is already shown as guessing game JSP version slash SRC and that we are already storing it in model. Let's go ahead and add the name. Recall we are calling it game number. We'll use the standard Java syntax for a class and capitalize each word. Modifiers, this will be public. We're not going to inherit from any other class other than object, so we'll leave the super class as is. We will not be using any interfaces. I do not need a main method for this class. Everything will be running from the server and the JSPs. I can leave inherit abstract methods checked. And let's go ahead and check to generate comments. Once my dialog is complete, I will click on finish. Over here in the package explorer, we now see that our game number.java file has been added under the model package. In the center, we see the editor for game number.java. We see the first line is package model, which has to be the first executable line for any Java class that is stored within a package. And then we see the basic stub for a class for the game number with very little in it. Let's think a little bit again about our Java class. Our game number class will have one single field called value that will be an int. We'll create that first. Best practice with Java classes is to declare our field level variables as private near the beginning of the class definition. So I typed in private int value. It's also good practice to do a little bit in your code and then save the code. Now that we have declared our field value, 
Let's move on to work on the constructors. We have two, game number, which will be a default constructor, and then game number with the parameter value, which will be read in as an int. So we are overloading the game number constructor. These constructors would not be too hard to just type in in our Eclipse editor, but Eclipse does provide some nice features that let us do this a little bit quicker. Click on the source menu. You'll notice there are several generate items in this menu. I'm going to pick generate constructor using fields. Since we do want a default constructor, I'm going to deselect the field this time. Make sure the access modifier is public. Let's go ahead and generate comments. We may want to fill some in later. And let's omit call to default constructor super. Now click OK. Now that the stub for a game number default constructor has been created, let's add a little code in there just to set our value to some arbitrary number. Let's set it to zero. Let's go ahead and generate our overload constructor that takes in a value. So this time check generate constructor using fields. Make sure that value is now selected. Let's double check. We want it to be public. We want to generate constructor comments, and we want to omit call to default constructor super. Once everything is set, click the OK button, and now our second game number constructor has been generated. Let's adjust this a little bit. One problem we could encounter is that somebody provides a negative number for our value. We would like all our numbers in our game to be positive, so let's make sure that that's the case. Let's go in here and add an if statement. If value is less than zero, then this dot value equals zero. Else, if they give us a positive number, we'll go ahead and set the number to that value. So as the designer of this class, we can create our constructors to do whatever we would like them to do in our code and satisfy any rules that we need to apply. Another quick look back at our game number UML class diagram and we see that we need two methods that are getters and setters, a get value that will return the value and a set value that will take whatever value is handed to it and set the field. Again, these are very simple methods so we could type them in, but let's look at how Eclipse has some nice features for automatically generating our getters and setters. Back to the source menu, notice the top generate item is generate getters and setters. Let's select that. And underneath the first box, you'll see a list of whatever fields might be already defined in your class. Of course, we just have the one. Another thing you can note is that if you click on the arrow, you can actually choose to generate both get and set, or just one of the two. Let's figure out the insertion point. I basically like to put mine at the end, so let's make that the last member. Sort by. I prefer to keep mine in getters and setter pairs. Sometimes people want to have all the getters together and then the setters together, so you can choose that if you prefer. I'm going to leave my getters and setters public. And once again, I'll generate method comments. Let's hit OK and see what happens. You can now see at the bottom of our game number class, we have two new methods, a get value, which will return the value, and a public set value. With the set value, we may have the same problem as we did before. So I would like to apply the rule to make sure that we set the value to be positive. So in effect, we're validating our data that it's at least positive before we set the field in both the game number constructor and in the set value class. As we look at our UML class diagram for game number, it looks like we've completed the easy parts. We have our field value, we have our two constructors, and we have our getters and setters. Now it's time to work on slightly more complex methods, set random and increment. The set random method will take two integers. The idea here is that we can provide a minimum value and a maximum value to provide a range. Then we'll change the value of our game number object to some random number between those two values. There's no easy way around this one. We will need to go ahead and type this in. So place your cursor somewhere below the last member, which in my version is the set value method. This will be a public method. It's going to return void. This method will just set field instead of returning a value. I'm going to call it set random as we called it in our class diagram. And I'm going to set up two arguments that set random will take. One is going to be a minimum value, and the second will be a maximum value. Now to do this, I have to figure out some way to create a random integer. Fortunately, 
that already exists within Java, there is a nice class called the random class with various methods that help us generate random numbers. To use the random class, I need to create an object of the random class. So I'm going to type R, big R, random. I'll just call it little r random for my object name, equals new, and then I'll call the default constructor for random. Now you notice that I do see an error. If I hover over the error, I see that random cannot be resolved to a type. So currently my program doesn't recognize the class random. Notice there are also several quick fixes available. I need to read through those and pick the one that's the problem in my case. In this case, I actually need to import random from Java Util. So I can either scroll back up to the top and type in import random, or with the quick fixes, it's nice and Eclipse that I can simply click on the one I want. Then if I scroll back up here where imports are, I see that it has been added. Back in our set random method, I can now use this to set the value. Let's type this dot value because that's what I want to set. It's going to be equal to my random object. Once I hit the dot after random, I see that there are a bunch of methods. Turns out the nicest one for me is this one called next int. Next int with zero parameters gives us a random number between zero and one. Next int with one parameter will give us a random integer between zero and that integer. So let's choose that. Go ahead and finish my line, and I need to replace the n with some kind of formula that will give me a random number in the range that I want. I basically need to do a formula like this. Maximum minus minimum plus minimum. I'll leave it to you to think through how that formula will actually get us a random number that is somewhere between the values of minimum and the values of maximum. One final look at our UML class diagram for our last method that we need to add to the game number class. Notice we need to add increment. The increment method will simply take whatever the value of game number is right now and it will adjust it up by one unit. Back here in our project we will type public void increment and we simply need to increment our value by one. couple things to clean up my class. So here we can see our completed game number class. Game number class is stored in the model package. We've imported one JCL class called random. We have one field which is an int called value that is set as private. We have two constructors one that is default and will set the value to zero, another that will read in a value, check to make sure it's positive, and then set the value as appropriate. We have a getter and a setter pair for our field. Then we have two methods that we designed called set random, which will set the value to some random integer between the two numbers that are provided. And we have another one called increment that will adjust the value up by one unit. So this is our game number class. We'll see how this can be used along with our JSPs in later videos. For more information related to the concepts in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. Background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy Production.